Okay, so he adds another layer to the murder plot. He's also going to have a poison drink ready to go in Hamlet's favorite cup during the duel. Now, while they're going through the murder plot, someone comes in. So the king says, but stay, what noise? And in walks in Queen Gertrude and she has some terrible news to give. She says, one woe doth tread upon another's heels so fast they follow. Your sisters drown, Laertes. Drowned? Oh, where? There is a willow grows against the brook that shows his hoar leaves and glassy stream. There with fantastic garlands did she make of crow flowers, nettles, daisies, and long purples that liberal shepherds give a grosser name. But our cold maids do dead men's fingers call them. There on the pendant boughs her crown, crownet weeds clambering to hang an envious liver broke. When down her weedy trophies and herself fell in the weepy brook, her clothes spread wide and mermaid-like, a while they bore her up, which time she chanted snatches of old louds, as one incapable of her own distress, or like a creature native and endued unto the element. But long it could not be till her garments, heavy with their drink, pulled the poor wretch from her melodious lay to muddy death. So here Queen Gertrude explains that Ophelia has drowned. Um, in her madness, in her mental breakdown, she decides to adorn herself with flowers, daisies, garlands, long strings of flowers. She's put on a beautiful dress and basically she wanted to add more flowers to her crown. And she saw these beautiful flowers hanging on a tree branch that overhung a river. Now, the person in the right mind would look at that branch and say, okay, that's too weak, I can't climb on that. But because Ophelia's mind is not clear, she climbs out on that branch. Sure enough, the branch breaks. And so Ophelia falls in the water and from the way it's explained, we believe that she fell in the water on her back. And for a while, her clothes spread out around her mermaid-like, and for a while she floated. Um, on one hand, like I said, Ophelia has dressed herself really, really beautifully. And at this time, women wore heavy fabrics. They had several layers of clothing on underneath, girdles, slips, this, that, and the other. And so for a while, she floats. Now, instead of her realizing, oh my goodness, I fall in the water, let me get out, she actually starts singing. And then her heavy clothing actually ends up helps, helping to pull her under the water to help her drown, unfortunately. And she drowns. And one question that rages on in the literary community is, is this death an accidental death? Or is this, is this death a suicide? We're not sure. So Laertes responds to this terrible news. He says, alas, then she is drowned? Drowned, drowned. Too much of water hast thou, of poor Ophelia, and therefore I forbid my tears. But yet it is our trick, nature her custom holds, let shame say what it will, when these are gone. The woman will be out, adieu my lord, I have a speech of fire that fain would blaze, but that this folly drowns it, and he exits. So here Laertes says something oh so beautifully poetic. He says, I won't cry tears for my sister because she's already had too much water today. And then he runs out of the room in a fury. Here we have King Claudius speaking to Gertrude here. He says, let's follow Gertrude. How much I had due to calm his rage. Now fear I this will give it start again. Therefore, let's follow. Now here he's being very deceptive because he has done the exact opposite of calming Laertes down. He's goaded Laertes on to commit revenge or commit murder. But of course he has to keep up appearances for Queen Gertrude. And that brings us to the end of Act 4. Part of the world, I should be greeted if not from Lord Hamlet. So right off the bat, Horatio is thinking, mm, this is kind of weird. 